is St. Louis Cardinals baseball. From Bush Stadium, a homestand comes to a close, and it's the rubber game between the Chicago Cubs and the St. Louis Cardinals. And welcome to St. Louis Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest. The Matt Hungarian, Al Braboski. My name is Dan McLaughlin, and today the Cardinals get a chance to honor two of their best players for the past decade or so, and that is Adam Wainwright and Yadier Molina. Well, Wainwright picks up his second gold glove this afternoon, and Yadi, who's just absolutely the best defensive catcher on the planet, he gets his sixth consecutive gold glove. And it's not just about what he does behind the plate, but also at the plate when you talk about Yadier Molina. Last season, a career-high 319 average. He's in the lineup today. The Cardinals face Edwin Jackson, their former teammate from 2011, that world championship team. It's Michael Walker, Edwin Jackson, the Cubs, the Cardinals, day baseball, and it comes your way next. Afternoon. Across the street we go, Ballpark Village, in our brand new studio. Here's Pat Paris.
Prince maker, third baseman, Matt Carpenter, all-star a year ago. Silver slugger, moves from second to third, and a productive man at the top of the order. by Bud Light, who reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. It's Chevy Truck Month. Visit your Mid-America Chevy dealers to take advantage of Truck Month offers on the all-new Chevy Silverado. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Rain was in the area this morning. We understand we have a big window to get this game in, and away we go as Matt Carpenter hustles out to his position on this Sunday afternoon. Along with the bad Hungarian, Al Rabaski, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Let's take a look at the lineup for the Chicago Cubs and Rick Renteria today. Some changes in there. Emilio Bonifacio, the switch hitter, hitting 435 back in the lineup. Justin Ruggiano, then Anthony Rizzo. We'll highlight Nate Sherholt's big series for him. Starlin Castro, Junior Lake, Mike Alt, Wellington Castillo had the three-run homer on Friday night. And the pitcher and old friend, Edwin Jackson. They will face one of the game's young pitchers and young guns in Michael Walkup. Two starts for Michael Waka. He's our Kia starter, and Al, he has been terrific. Well, it's hard to duplicate what he did in postseason, and you just want him to just go out and use, utilize his good arm. What really has separated him is he is so advanced than his young age, second youngest player on the Cardinals roster, youngest is Carlos Martinez, but he just goes out there and wants to get better, a very good student. He listens to... Carpenter and Wainwright last year. Now he just listened to Wainwright, and now the big thing is just go out there and pitch, and he does that very well. Jumping towards the uh, batter's box, Emilio Bonifacio. 
What a start he has had. He's in the top five in hitting 20 hits already this season. Let go by Kansas City. Chicago looking for players that have been at this level and in many ways stop gaps until their young prospects come up. But so far, so good for Bonifacio. Well, he's very versatile. So I think that was why he was attracted to the Cubs. But I don't think they had any idea to get off to this start, this start. And whoever thought that he would, you and I are booking a flight to Vegas with him right after this game. Emilio Bonifacio and there's a strike from Michael Waka one ball one strike and we're underway here in St. Louis the Cardinals are six and five and the Cubs four and seven Waka first showed up. He was a two pitch pitcher Very good fastball very good changeup. you know from the six foot six body he very easily throws downhill and throws from the same arm angle, but he wanted to get better with the curveball He's also worked hard on the cutter and you know he just wants to become a complete pitcher and he's one of those guys that you know the, what we've seen right here the Cardinals might want to keep him his entire career you a little bet. bit different than Edwin Jackson you bet there's a fastball that it's hit out of play Cardinals talk about his makeup even more than his stuff and what he's done between the white lines and they say this guy is unflappable never changes he's just off the charts in terms of his makeup and you just can't teach that there's the change up taken high and it's three and two one of the things I've noticed and it's kind of a byproduct early in the season you're a little bit amped up but sometimes that change up has been thrown a little bit too hard and a lot of times it's up throwing the pitch up to Bonifacio is not a bad idea he has very little power his strength is slap and run. So he's going to want to swing down on the ball and just almost a, with a running start. But if he hits the ball in the air, it's going to come down. It's going to be a catch. You can see how shallow the outfielders are playing. Three, two, lifted in the air. Left center, Borges calling for it. He has it. A look at the umpires. Jerry Lane is our crew chief. He's behind home plate under Winnelstad at first. Gabe Morales at second, and Mike Estabrook is at third. A couple weeks into replay, we had a challenge call yesterday that hurt the Cardinals. And I think for the most part, so far, so good. It hurt the Cardinals, but it didn't ultimately hurt them when the scoreboard. You scored 10 runs and have 13 hits. Season highs for the Cardinal offense. But the, the big thing is the umpires got it right. They have chased ball three. This is Justin Ruggiano. Came over from the Miami Marlins. Ruggiano had a birthday this weekend, and I think we were both a bit surprised that he's 32. Very. Thought we would, he was much younger than that. Just missing on that last delivery. Three one pitch. Ruggiano fouls it back. Just below us. And a souvenir here at the ballpark. And again, it's still filling up. I'm sure some of the fans over at Scott Trade Center to watch the St. Louis Blues. Their season finale. They'll open up the playoffs. On Thursday at Scott Trade Center, and you can see the first round right here on Fox Sports Midwest. There's a base hit into left center field for Justin Ruggiano. Borges cuts it off, and it's a one out hit. Missouri Lottery Fox Tracks. Let's take a look. Well, a lot of this down the middle of the plate, and pitch right there is going to be hit. Just a single. One of the things that Waka had problems in his the home opener is the leadoff man of an inning was doing a lot of damage against him. So he got Bonifacio out, but now he's need to get Rizzo. In the air, deep right. Craig looks up and it's gone. 
Anthony Rizzo, a two-run shot here in the first. Led their team in home runs with 23 a year ago in his second in 2014. Sit on down, Cub fans. Two more RBIs. He's up to eight right now. And one of the things that these Cubs are going to be doing, they're going to be swinging early in the count, thinking that Walker's going to try and get ahead in the count. Later on, he'll probably work on his secondary pitches, particularly the changeup. So they're going to jump on any first pitch fastball they see. And Rizzo knew it. Nate Shearholtz, Cardinals have had fits with him. Average now above 300 at 306. At a four hit night in game one. And yesterday, two hits. Shearholtz really took advantage of coming to the Cubs and getting a chance to play every day last year. Hit 21 home runs, had career highs there, doubles. Really a surprise as he was more of a role player the year before with San Francisco. First strikeout for Walkup, and there's two down. Look at the defense behind him around the horn, brought to you by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers with Holiday, Borges, and Craig in the outfield. Carpenter and Peralta on the left side, Wong and Adams on the right side of the infield, and Yadier Molina, six consecutive gold gloves behind home plate. Here is Stylin Castro, 326, couple of home runs, eight RBIs. He's off to a good start. And a bit surprising because he had virtually no spring training. Injured a right hamstring early in camp and really only played right at the very end, and yet he's gotten off to the good start. They have Javier Baez, Chris Bryant. Solar, who's a 22 year old outfielder that they love. And then you mix it Castro and Rizzo. They do believe there's a bright future for the Chicago Cubs. Some of that future on display today. 2 0. The Cubs lead it after a half inning of play. Matt Carpenter leads it off at even 300 average. Then Colton Wong and Matt Holliday. Matt Adams, Yadier Molina, Alan Craig. Craig 7 for 15 with a double against Jackson. Then Peralta had yesterday off. Peter Borges and Michael Walkup. So Matt Carpenter even 300 average. One home run, six RBIs as he walks into the batter's box here at Bush Stadium. Hard throwing right hander Edwin Jackson gets the call today for Chicago. Well, he's been around a long time with many different clubs. Originally signed by the Dodgers as an outfielder. They immediately made him a pitcher. And one thing about Jackson is he will take the ball. He will give you a start every five days. 
And you know he's under 500 lifetime. But the fact that he'll take the ball every fifth day, he'll be at that 200 pitch or 200 innings mark, it becomes a valuable uh, person. But this is his eighth different ball club now. And as we found out, not a bad guy, a good guy. Good guy. And, and you think if you're with eight different teams, there must be something behind the scenes that's going on. Well, and he's got good stuff, but he's very inconsistent. It's almost like one good start, one bad start. And he's really never had much success against the Cardinals. They've got good numbers against him. One ball and two strikes. And you go down the list of some of the names that he's been traded for or been a part of in these deals. Some of the biggest names currently in baseball. And he was very good down the stretch for the Cardinals in 2011. Check swing and Carpenter held up. It's two and two. Matter of fact, he had a very good game against the Chicago Cubs that really helped propel the Cardinals to postseason late that 2011 campaign. This is what Matt Carpenter could do time and time again. Two borderline pitches, great batter's eye, disciplined strike zone, one of the best right now in baseball going deep into counts. And he shoots it out to left center. Ruggiano though with room and makes the catch. Well, you just saw Justin Ruggiano. Junior Link is in left. Nate Shearholtz in right. That's the Cubs outfield as we go around the horn. Presented by Dobbs Tired Auto Centers. All Castro on the left side of the infield. Bonifacio and Rizzo on the right side. Wellington Castillo. He's behind the plate. And a ball to Colt Long. One ball, one strike. Was talking with somebody this morning, Al, about the loss of Carlos Beltran how this lineup does look much differently than it did a year ago with Beltran in that second spot in the lineup part of that's only because that uh, you know Peralta and, and Alan Craig have gotten off the slow starts if they were hitting like we believe they will then you don't miss Beltran as much slap the other way and that drops in for a base hit for Colton Wall. Long turn around at first base, but stops there on a high sock Sunday. Went long to that bat, almost resting on his shoulders. Then he'll take it up, get to his trigger spot, and the pitch out away, and just lets the ball get deep, and then he'll pull that trigger. Good concentration there on the pitch away. Kind of curious that the Cubs signed Edwin Jackson, a fly ball pitcher, to pitch at Wrigley Field. Now, there are a lot of times the wind will blow in early in the year, but it blows out late in the season. And Edwin Jackson, his first year in Chicago, led the major leagues in losses. 18 last year. Inside to Holiday. Three years left on the deal for Edwin Jackson. So he'll be sticking around for a while. His ERA was 4.98. And he struggled down the stretch in that rotation for the Cubs. One in seven in his final 10 starts. And on the year, opponents hit close to 300 against him, 281. One ball, one strike on Matt Holiday. Had a couple of hard hit balls yesterday and still trying to get on track. Matt's just too good of a hitter. He's been around too long. He's got too much of a pedigree that he will hit. Last year he got off to the slow start, but he really made up for it the second half. 
You know he'd like to get up started a little quicker. Big gap out in left center. They pitch him in. It's kind of surprising with, with that gap out in left center and his ability to take so many balls up the middle that you would give him that left center gap. That stance of Matt Holiday has never changed. You know, for a guy that has hit well above 300 in his career, some will hit a rut, decide to change their stance. We saw that all the time with Yadier Molina, but Holiday, this has been the way he's looked since day one. Well, when you're a career 311 hitter, the big league change. level, white change. Right. And like you said, Yadier was constantly changing. He became a much better hitter when he stayed with one approach. A 2 1 pitch. 2 and 2. Molina, the 43 RBIs against Chicago since 2011. That's most in the big leagues. Holiday, most home runs with 11. And Edwin Jackson has made six starts here at Bush Stadium prior to today. 0 and 4 with an ERA over 9. The 2 2 inside. Let's see if they want to start the runner, Colt Long. I would think they would. What do you think about Holiday? Makes contact a lot of times, hard hit balls, hit into a lot of double plays a year ago. Exactly. All the indications is, with especially the speed of Colt Long. Remember last year at Triple A, he was 20 for 21 in stolen bases. Gets good jumps. I would run him. There he goes, and it's taken for a ball. First walk issued by Edwin Jackson, and it brings in Matt Adams. So Jim Hayes had a report on Matt Adams the other day talking about the elbow and finally feeling healthy. And we're seeing that here with Adams being able to spray the ball all over the place. Well, he's kind of finding a little bit humorous. Everybody talking about how many hits he's getting to left field. He said, when my elbow's healthy, I've always been able to use the entire field. And the point being is that with the elbow the way that it was, he could not get full extension. extension. And I've talked to him about that. Especially last year, we were in Oakland and he had that brace that made it cumbersome for him to extend. Did bother him in September, though. No, it did. The strike on Adams, one ball, one strike. Edwin Jackson is tough to play defense behind him. He'll keep his defenders out there a long time. As he's a very slow, deliberate worker. It's almost like he's going to have a high pitch count all the time because he's always, you know, going to go deep into a count with a hitter. One and two. And this is why so many around baseball look at him and say, why can't he do that every time? That pitch right there was nasty. Nasty curveball there. He still has a good life on his fastball. You know, he's got the pitches. He's got the repertoire. You know, it's just that, and I think every pitcher coach says, I think I can speed him up. I can do this. I can do that. And then he gets traded to the next guy that thinks he can do it. One two pitch. Adams with a fly ball. Out to deep left center. Ruggiano makes the catch on the track. Colton Long tags up from second to third. Holiday stays put. Runners at the corners for Yadier Molina. Talked about Jackson being a fly ball pitcher. You're seeing it this inning. A nice ovation for Yadier. MLB this offseason had a they had a little kind of a poll around baseball. Who is the face of every franchise? It was not even close with the Cardinals. Yadier Molina was the overwhelming, you know, it was over 70 percent 
of him receiving all Cardinal fan vote for the face of the franchise. I was talking with Yachty the other day, and I asked him, I said, at this point in your career, what, what still motivates you? What gets you going? And he said, the reception I get at home is something that I still get goosebumps with. And he said, if you want to stay at a high level, you better work at a high level. He's the first guy at spring training. Many times, he's the first guy to the ballpark. Talked about, talked about it earlier, Dan, that how many different stance Yadier Molina had. Those were the early days here, but of late, he's really come up with one stance. He, now he's perfected it into the fact of just how loose, how relaxed he is. And yet, he can have that violent swing when he sees a pitch that he likes. I think the influence of Albert Pujols has been dramatic on Yadier Molina. He has made him now, okay, you're, you're really good, but now you, how can you be great? And that's what he strives to, strives for that perfection. Would you agree that getting out of the uh, Pujols shadow, so to speak, was beneficial for Yadier? Absolutely. Absolutely. It seemed like his career got to another level when Pujols decided to sign with the Angels. Well, it gave him that, you know, natural leadership spot. The 2 1. He's revered by the pitching staff. You know, so good at framing pitches, calling the games. And he can hit Edwin Jackson. 522 and three home runs. And those home runs have been hit against three different teams. Right. The 2 2. And Yachty hits a line drive out to right that should be caught. Shearholtz is there. The Cardinals strand two. And after an any of play here at Bush Stadium, 2 0 Chicago. So the fans at uh, Ballpark Village can get somewhat of the experience of being at the game over there. And they're showing Adam Wainwright, Yadier Molina receiving their Gold Glove Awards. Al has our Toyota keys to the game. Well, we got a chance to have a 4-2 homestand. That would be very nice. You win this series with a victory here today. And you really set you up for and a positive way to go on to a tough road trip. 11 game road trip and Edwin Jackson, you know, you just got to go out there and you just got to be patient with him. 
He's going to give you a pitch to hit. Just be ready for that. He's got good stuff, but he'll make enough mistakes in the strike zone you can pay off. 26 pitches in the first inning for Edwin Jackson. And after an outing that saved the, the Cubs bullpen by Chris Rusin yesterday, he was sent out to Iowa, and Blake Parker, right-hander, is available and in their pen today. Rusin got rewarded for all that five innings, right? Save the bullpen and see you later. <laughs> and because he was not available for three or three days or so, you can bring in another fresh arm. Thanks a lot. Here's Junior Lake. Now let's take a look at the changeup of Michael Walker. And some refer to it as a left handed slider, even a screwball. Yes. It has that type of action. Where sometimes, if to a right handed batter, that ball, you know, will almost look like it has a, a little right turn going in on them. Obviously, he's got the same arm angle. You know, he's six foot six to begin with throws the ball from a high release point it's sharply to third and carpenter can't come up with it e5 on the play that carpenter has played by the way very well defensively at third I was say that ball was hit hard but matt knows he should have made this play and just kind of got away from him and he has played spectacular over at third base his natural position and he's made some plays I, you know, we didn't, we didn't know he was capable of making them, but he's shown great range and probably one of the simpler ones he's had commits an error. Michael Alt. It's primarily been coming off the bench. Got some power, a couple of home runs. Four RBIs. One of the coaches was telling me before the game about Matt Carpenter. They've been impressed on his leads on double plays. The way that he's able to lead that second baseman on a turn. As Wong puts it away. And if anybody knows about a turn, it's Matt Carpenter. Exactly. And you know how you could hang out a, a second baseman to dry if you make a poor throw in the, you know, you bobble the ball and let that runner get down on top of him. So he's doing what he needs to do because he knows what uh, appreciates when he does get a good throw. Very good defensive game for Wellington Castillo on Friday night and then had the uh, three run homer in extra innings. To seal a victory. I mean an underrated catcher wouldn't you say an all all around player. Absolutely. He's impressed me and I know the Cubs brass and they are here Jed Hoyer their general manager. They like the way that he calls a game but specifically dealing with a, a younger staff and some of the young players that have had them in called up the last couple of years. A souvenir for the fans down the right side. Most important thing for a catcher is handling that pitching staff and then when you can provide offense on top of it then you got something a little special. One out runner at first no balls and two strikes on the eighth place hitter. Sometimes a byproduct of working so hard on your secondary pitches I meaning in his case the curveball and the cutter is you kind of lose what was one of your strengths and we've seen the, the change up really not as effective this year yet. Pulled down the left field line and out of play. But as you touched upon the start of our uh, telecast here today, the curveball is much improved. And the Cardinals have talked about how he stays behind the curveball. It's not just spinning, but it's something that's a pitch of feel for him every fifth day. Oh, he started, he's starting to learn how to throw a get ahead breaking ball and then throw a tighter one with better velocity to kind of put you away. But it's really the the fastball changeup combination is really what got him to the big leagues. But he wasn't content just to be four and one in the postseason, you know, being the MVP of the league championship series. So he really worked hard this offseason perfecting those other pitches. 
Good pitch there. That was the cutter. And a strikeout. His third of the day brings in Edwin Jackson. See, he throws that cutter and just all he doesn't have to break is just a little bit. Just have a little bit of movement. Toughest thing in all sports trying to hit a, a round baseball with a round bat. The shot for Ballpark Village. Windy day here at the ballpark, and here's Edwin Jackson. Jackson on the first pitch pops it up. Foul territory. Matt Carpenter is there to make the catch. That sends us to the home half of the second. The Cardinals have Craig Peralta Borges. The strikeout of Castillo. Three today for Walkup. With Jim Hayes and Jim uh, Johnny Peralta, two hits this season. That's it. Both have been home runs. What's happening with his approach? Yeah, I was asking Peralta about his slow start before the game. He said he's not overly concerned about it. He got a day off from Mike Matheny yesterday. Peralta told me he used it to look at video. He said he was comparing his swing from last season when he was in the groove to this season. And Dan, he says it's the same swing. He says he's hitting the ball pretty hard. And I know fans are probably looking for. A more complicated explanation. He says, Dan, he's just starting off slow and it will come around. Also, a very slow start under the watchful eye of John Mabry for Alan Craig. So, Craig Peralta, Borges, and Jim, uh, before we let you go, uh, you tweeted out that there is some weather coming into St. Louis. Is that correct? Yeah, I heard from some folks down here that uh, there is some rain coming in. They're, they're expecting it to be here at about 2 o'clock. They're not sure how long. But uh, they do anticipate there will be more baseball beyond that. And you can follow Jim, the cat on Fox. He is on Twitter this year, the cat on Fox, and that is the latest breakest, uh, breaking uh, news and the greatest news that you can find <laughs> coming from Jim Hayes. I was going to ask you for that Twitter handle, but because yep. I really want to follow Jim. And yours is what, Al? What, what are you up to now? Um, how many followers? How many followers? It's, it's 72 million. Uh huh. And well, when you got 72 million followers, you don't need to get the hand out. Nicely done, Al. <laughs> Three and zero on Alan Craig. With as much as as guys change teams now, Al, and it was a little different when you were playing. There were trades clearly. You did see guys leave your team and you may face them, but who has the advantage in those spots? You know, when Edwin Jackson is pitching for the Cardinals in 2011, they're going to break down everything he does right, everything he does wrong. And it is a game of adjustments, but 
who has the upper hand when you face each other. Well, I think the advantage always goes to a pitcher. He knows what he wants to throw you. He should always throw his strength, even if it matches up with your strength. But, you know, when you're not facing guys, you haven't faced guys a lot in the past, the first time that meeting would be the pitcher's favor. Johnny Peralta, two for 32, with two home runs, four RBIs. Leadoff walk, the second issued by Edwin Jackson. Outfield is deep and straight away. Peralta has 36 at bats against Edwin Jackson. 10 for 36, a home run, four RBIs. So Johnny has a pretty good idea what Edwin Jackson is going to throw. Jackson knows what his strengths are, what as a pitcher, and what the hitter's strengths are also. Johnny now 31 years old, two-time All-Star. Most recently, last season. Member of Detroit had eight seasons with Cleveland, three with the Tigers, and now here in St. Louis. The eighth different opening day shortstop for the Cardinals. Eight consecutive years. Different face out there at short. It seems like second base has kind of had its share of revolving doors there. Good point. Peralta, a four-year contract, and he may not he may not play shortstop all four of those years, but Pete Cosmo was good enough to play in 27 postseason games the last couple of years, most by any major league shortstop, but tough find in the field this year. The two one. Three and one. That's what we're talking about with Edwin Jackson, you know, a lot of deep counts. You got the infielders all standing around. They get flat footed. Third baseman Mike Alt, hands on his hips. Here's a 3 1 pitch. 3 and 2. By the way, the Cardinals have Mark Ellis. On a rehab assignment, he's at Triple A Memphis, dealing with left knee patella tendonitis, and he is single in his first at bat this afternoon. He can stay down there as long as 20 days, but I doubt it will be that long. Castro. Three and two with Alan Craig, the runner at first. Castro, who they at times wonder. Is his head in the game. That's ripped out to left field. Drops in for a hit. We talked about one of the keys with Edwin Jackson is just be patient because he'll make enough mistakes in the middle of the strike zone that you'll get your chances. And Johnny Peralta jumped on that high delivery. Peter Borges was hitless on the first road trip. Average now at 207. One for four with a double in this series. Yeah, but he's a lifetime 375 hitter in Bush Stadium. It's all this, all this homestand. Big sample size, huh? Yeah. You've been doing your homework again. <laughs> First pitch, a breaking ball and a strike. Michael Walker is on deck. So runners at first and second. A walk to Craig. Peralta the base hit on a 3-2 pitch. And here's the 0-1 to Borges. Showed you that last shot, so we'll get ready for Washington. It's a, better go higher. <laughs> oh, higher. We're higher. Pittsburgh and Washington, the broadcast booth. Might as well put us at the top of the stadium. 
just below the light standards, right? And a swing and a miss by Borges. First strikeout, Redwood Jackson. Well, Michael Walker coming into the season, not even at 100 pitches, or rather 100 innings thrown in the major leagues, and yet he has his own bobblehead night. I think he earned it last year. I do too. Which stadium was packed on Friday for that giveaway? I don't think we'd mind seeing uh, Michael Walker souvenirs for the next 20 years. Corners are brought in. Walker squares to bunt and gets it down. Rizzo will give it a look, but the only play. It is the first and the sacrifice is good and the runners advance to second and third. A lot of people talk about Walker is kind of a clone of Adam Wainwright. Adam Wainwright helped his own cause. Bunting swinging away with an RBI single yesterday and there's so many different ways a, a pitcher can help his own cause. Just when he's standing in that batter's box. The or, Cubs believe Al that uh, Anthony Rizzo will be a gold glover at some point and with a left handed throwing first baseman you really have to deaden that bunt which is what he did that's not an easy play and they kind of almost bunted it right to the third baseman who was right down on top of him and it's a little surprised that he didn't you know, give a little more of a look to third base Rizzo turned around and filled the ball and so Tough situation right there, and Walker was outstanding in getting both runners advanced. This will already be pitch number 43 for Edwin Jackson. Carpenter with a base hit could tie it up. One ball, one strike. Light out his first time up to deep left center. Seventy eight RBIs last year sixty nine from the top spot in the lineup. Was there a player that made more adjustments last year. At the big league level. than Matt Carpenter and what I'm saying is. Switching a position moving up in a lineup. I, I don't think there is and. Cardinal offense was a little stagnant last year early and when they made the decision to change the closers and also put Carpenter in the leadoff spot when the Cardinal team took off last year. One ball and two strikes with two outs and two on. Carpenter stays alive. One thing that Matt does, talking with him the other day with two strikes, and we've talked about it a lot, not afraid to hit with two strikes, prefers it that way. You mentioned it earlier with Colton Wong, how he lets the ball get deep. And so he makes that decision, just that last split second to follow pitch off and then earn another pitch and find a pitch to drive. Two and two. Carpenter already will sets up deep in the batter's box. So by letting the ball travel further deeper to you, you allow on a breaking ball, you can see the break. You're not fooled by that. You're not out on your front foot. And it really allows you to really hit the ball to all fields, particularly to the opposite field, by letting the ball travel deep. Carpenter up the middle, base hit, and this game is tied on a 2-2 pitch. Carpenter delivers with two down here in the second. All tied up at two. 
What a great at bat, huh? Well, you think you get two strikes on him, you think you, you're, you're in the driver's seat, but he's just so good that he might make an outstanding pitcher's pitch, but he'll foul that pitch off. And then finally, you'll make a mistake. Not that that's a mistake. That's a good, pretty good pitch down and away. But with allowing it to come in, that good balance right there, taking it right up the middle. And he's one of those guys that, even from the leadoff spot, spot is very comfortable in an RBI situation and can come through. There goes Carpenter. He's running. Throw to second. Safe. Stolen base for Carpenter. Picked the breaking ball there, and that's the difference. And allowed him that extra step to get in there right ahead of the tag. 77 RBIs. The leadoff hitter since 2013. No doubt he's safe right there. It's great camera action right there. Hyundai showing you that he was ahead of the tag. Talk so much about the Cardinals and what they did with runners in scoring position a year ago, but also what they did with two outs. The numbers were quite gaudy in that regard, too. Some players didn't make a difference. No. Base hit could put the Cardinals on top. Good cut by Colton Wong. We've had an extended time now to watch Wong. Give me your just. Impressions, general sense of what you've seen. I like my impressions a lot more this year than than a year ago. Last year I was convinced that he could play defense at the major league level, but I really questioned whether he could hit. But and then we saw at the beginning of spring training, 0 for 10. But he took off and had the best spring of any of the Cardinals. And that's a base hit in the right. Here comes Carpenter. The throw from Sheryls, no throw. Carpenter scores. Wong delivers. Birds on top. Colton's fourth RBI gives the Cardinals the 3 2 lead. This is the Cardinal offense that we're accustomed to seeing. Yesterday they had their season high in home runs and RBIs. Breaking ball coming right into the left handed swing. Pulls it through the right side. And with two outs, even though the third place hitter is coming up, they're going to go ahead and send him home. And why not? There was no throw. That st stolen base really was key there, getting himself in scoring position so he could score on Colton Wong's base hit, an RBI. Extends the inning to Holiday. He walked his first time up. Cardinals, a little bit of that small ball. Here in this inning, when you think about the sacrifice by Michael Walker to bring up Carpenter with two outs, Carpenter's stolen base that generates a run. How many times, Dan, you would see somebody, you know, sacrifice in that situation? But you see with runners in scoring position, first six games, they weren't very good. But they're picking up the pace. Things are getting a lot better. And I think that's going to be. We're going to see that trend more so than the first six games. But a lot of times, you know, teams will sacrifice. For the second out and you go, why? It, that leadoff guy probably is not going to score him. But with Carpenter, you've got a legitimate chance. You know that he can get that job done. And hitting becomes contagious. If you get something going with the bottom of the order. The way the Cardinal offense can turn over, they just keep on rolling through. Another check on Colton. Edwin Jackson at 52 pitches. It's getting that defense really just back on their heels. Out of play, nothing into the count. Well, there was a lot of attention on Starlin Castro. You may remember it was an ESPN Sunday night telecast. They had a camera on him, and Bobby Valentine didn't hold back. He was working at that point in time on those Sunday night games, and Castro, let's just say he was disinterested. 
And this is the first time in this series we've seen this from Castro and we're seeing it from a lot of the defenders for the Cubs. And it's just because of the slow pace of Edwin Jackson. Up the middle, that's a base hit on an 0-2 pitch. Long digging for third. Four hits in the inning. That just blisters that ball. Hits the ball so hard. Yeah, he hit in a lot of ground ball double plays, but more times than not, he'll just drive that ball through the infield. Now the real concern right now for the Chicago Cubs is been their bullpen, but also does Jackson have anything right now that he can put hitters away with? He's getting to two strikes. He can't put these hitters away. Well, and, and like I said, it's a very curious move to a four year fifty two million dollar contract for Jackson last season when you play eighty one games at Wrigley Field you really don't want a fly ball pitcher on the mound and that's what Jackson is. Matt Adams. Runners at the corners two down. Matt first time up. Flight out to deep left center field catch made on the track by Reggiano. Adams goes the other way and Alt is there across the diamond and makes the play. But the Cardinals get four hits and three two out RBIs and their first lead in game three. A chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast. It's brought to you by AT&T. Michael Walker pitching now with a 3-2 lead. The packed house here in St. Louis. Carpenter the single to drive in two. Colton Wong with the RBI as well. Adds up to a 3-2 lead. Emilio Bonifacio, Justin Ruggiano, and Anthony Rizzo homered. Do up for Chicago here in the top of the third. Oh, and two. The lights have uh, popped on here at Bush Stadium. Take a little bit of time for those lights to. Go into effect. 
also saw the members of the ground crew talking to our home plate umpire the crew chief it's usually an indication that there is weather in the area or soon Talking with Mike Matheny about Walker's first start of the season, which happened on opening day. First start here at Bush Stadium, the home opener. And I said, Do you do anything to calm him down, to talk to him? You know, we forget he's only 22. Mike had a little smile on his face and he said, We just leave him alone. He said, He's not your normal 22 year old. No. So far advanced, just the way he handles himself and. Doesn't let things get too uh, distracting. May have hung that, but gets away with it. Bonifacio strikes out. That's four today for Michael Waka. Breaking ball, and like you said, kind of sat there a little bit, but guy that's off to a toward start, Bonifacio swings through it and misses. Reggiano pops one foul. He singled and scored. Back in the first inning on the two run homer by Rizzo. He's on deck. The cover is now off the tarp. Could be a matter of moments before we see some rain here at the ballpark. Like a little thunder, too. Three and one to count. I, I would think that uh, the Cardinals would not want to see Waka's outing being shortened much more than the Cubs would see Jackson. The first walk issued by Michael Waka. Fox Sports Supports is proud to collaborate with Stand Up to Cancer. Groundbreaking initiative created to accelerate innovative cancer research that gets new therapies to patients quickly in order to save lives now. For more information, visit Fox Sports Supports, all one word, dot com. Ruggiano had a very good year a season ago with Miami. Opened a lot of eyes that both teams, Bogusevic went the other way, Ruggiano came to Chicago. That's hammered but pulled foul. And speaking of cancer research, five years now, cancer free Anthony Rizzo. Hodgkin's lymphoma. And he has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars in the fight against cancer. Good change up there. And that one was at 86 miles an hour. We've seen that change up being thrown at 88, 89 even. And it's a little too hard at that, at that speed. The 0 2. The fly ball. High in the air. Borges makes the catch. Reggiano back to the bag at first. Even on that ball right there, just a routine fly ball out there. I'm sure Alan Craig was telling Peter Borges that Ruggiano, the runner at first base, was not tagging up. But you could just see how he kind of circled that ball to get his momentum coming forward. So even though when somebody's not running, see how he kind of goes around and then Craig said he's not running, but he was getting in position. And if they would have told him he's running, he would have been in good position to come forward and make a strong throw. Nate Sherholtz takes a change up low. If you get to the ballpark early enough and the Cardinals are taking BP, watch Peter Borges out in center. He uses it as a training tool, but he chases down everything during batting practice. You get to really see that speed and a pick off and a throw down to second and got him. 
Ruggiano is picked off. We're midway through three. And coming up for St. Louis, Yadier Molina, Alan Craig, and the man with the tag, Johnny Peralta. Jerry Lane, the uh, crew chief, home plate umpire today, said we continue to play. It's a light rain right now as we flash back. Yadier Molina, Al told you, Edwin Jackson, three different uniforms, three different home runs for Yadi against Jackson. In Chicago last season, 2012, it was against Washington. And back in 09, when Jackson was with Detroit, Yachty hit a home run. Molina lined out to right first time up. As long as the weather's like this, they'll play through it. Molina, two for three yesterday, scored a run. And he's done that seven straight times against the Chicago Cubs. One more game like that. And he'll tie the club's all-time record for most consecutive games against one opponent with at least two hits and a run scored. Well, he's on his way. There's your base hit to start the bottom of the third for Molina. Cardinals score six. Get any size coffee, fountain, or frozen drink for just 50 cents the next day. Keep the savings going all season long at your nearest on the run. Molina the base hit into center and here is Alan Craig. How many times have we said a guy is struggling gets a few walks in a row and then all of a sudden sets up that you all of a sudden he's seeing the ball better and it goes on a hit and tear. Alan Craig walked the first time up. Eleven different Cardinals took it at bat yesterday. Seven of the eleven reach base. Rain is picked up just a bit, and I think with that, that's going to be it. They see that ball slip out of the hand of Jackson, and Jerry Lane said, "That's enough. We don't need to get anybody hurt." So we have a stoppage at 2:20 here in St. Louis. Billy Finley and the crew here in St. Louis rush to get the tarp on the field. And because of this, good friends at Helitech sponsor our rain delays. Heal your home with Helitech. Helitech rain delay with 
Nobody out the bottom of the third. And a single by Yadier Molina. Ball one on Alec Craig. And we'll have more to come during this Helitech rain delay.
she'll be shy of an hour, but still, for these pitchers, long time to sit. That always plays into what you may do from a managerial perspective. Well, you'd like to hope that you mentally prepare for this and you don't have a problem physically restarting the engine and getting ready to go out and compete. As I said, it's probably a lot easier for Edwin Jackson. He's a veteran, been around a long time. He's encountered these situations. Something re relatively new for Michael Walkup, but I'm sure he'll be back too. But if there's any indications, they would uh, be very cautious with with Waka. Fans returning to their seats. Alan Craig first time up walked and scored that was back in the second inning the Cardinals just joining us fell behind early on Anthony Rizzo with a two run shot and the Cardinals sent eight men to the plate in the home half of the second took the lead three two that's where we stand right now and you know Jim Hayes has been digging for stories what do you have Jimmy. Well, these guys uh, have become experts at killing time, but one thing that they're not doing in the Cardinal clubhouse is playing ping pong. That ping pong table that was in the clubhouse in Jupiter was transported back to St. Louis, but the Cardinals gave that up as part of a charity event. We understand there's a new ping pong table on order, but it hasn't arrived. So those guys, Dan, they might have had to read a book or something. Imagine that. Edwin Jackson so far high pitch count. It's at 60. It still has yet to record it out here in the third. That ping pong table was the talk of spring training. A short lead at first by Molina. Or just as the king of ping pong ping pong for the Cardinals right. Very good player. Wait a minute get that off the screen. We've got baseball going on over here. That's over at ballpark village. There we go. Hello ballpark village. Big gap in left center for Craig. 1 0 -oh pitch. Well, we were so rudely interrupted with a yeah. 45 minute or 46 minute rain delay. Alan Craig walked his first time up and we now hit him with a 2 0 count. I'm a firm believer when you start taking walks, start getting the count in your favor, you're about ready to go on a hitting tear. The 2 0. Two balls and one strike. Pitch up there, you don't want to chase. A lot of the uh, ground balls that Craig had, has hit here the first couple of weeks have been to the right side. We see the Cubs shading him to the opposite field. So just wonder if he's just a tick off, a tick late with some of these swings. Yeah, it looks like his swing is a little bit slower and kind of feeling for the ball, maybe kind of guessing on the strike zone a little bit, but it's too uh, too much of a hitter. Proven track record, he'll get it straightened out. The Cardinals in the home half of the second scored all their runs with two outs. Two out RBI base hit by Matt Carpenter. Then Colton Long with a single to right. And that scored Carpenter after he stole second. The 2-2. Trying to bust him in again. 
Yeah, they're trying to get in on him. And remember when he first came up, you know, National League or Major League pitchers were thinking the way he held his hands that he would be have a long swing. Well, he proved that he could hit the ball inside. But right now, it just looks like he's vulnerable to the pitch inside, a little bit slow with that bat. The day that we have a rain delay. The right guy is on the mound. They'd have him on the mound. The human rain delay at the plate. It was what Mike Hargrove, Hargrove. wasn't he? Yeah, Mike Hargrove. It's funny because what we used to call Mark Mike Hargrove, you know, the human rain delay was he would take one after every pitch, he'd finish finish with his gloves and do all these different things. Now every hitter does it. I've had more fans tell me their frust their frustration with Skip Schumacher. One of the most likable guys. But when he would step out and it became a habit for him, he would readjust the batting gloves, strap it one way, pull it off, the Velcro and the gloves, then dig back in. They said, I love watching Skip Schumacher play. However, I can't stand watching him hit. <laughs> and, you know, uh, it, it still is a rule in the National League, but once you get to the batter's box, you have to ask permission to leave the batter's box. But that's obviously not enforced. Then a look over by Jackson and a 2 2 pitch. As Craig sends it out of play. That's what was interesting about replay. At the time frame that managers have to go out and challenge a call. Once the pitcher toes the rubber and the hitter is back in the batter's box, the previous play is thought to be done. That was your time frame to get it done. Well, apparently with Edwin Jackson, you can rewind as much as you want and <laughs> take a look at previous at bats. It's another 2 2 pitch. Nope. Steps off. That threat to run over at first base, Yadier Molina, is getting into the head of Edwin Jackson. He knows he's about ready to take off any second. Craig strikes out. Second strikeout for Jackson. Right over the top of the breaking ball, looked like the head came out. And now it's Johnny Peralta. Lined a base hit to left on a 3 2 pitch back in the second. That was his first hit other than a home run this year. Get back on track, Johnny. Had the day off yesterday, really a mental break. A lot of swings for Peralta in the cage. And he grounds it to short and a double play. Six, four, three. Michael Waka returns to the mound when we come back.
phone or tablet. Get live look-ins, instant replay, scores, stats, highlights, and more. Download on the App Store or visit Cardinals.com today. Michael Walker back out for the fourth inning. Long raid delay of 46 minutes as it hit at 2.20 local time. Walker has struck out four. He's walked one and given up a two-run homer to Anthony Rizzo. You wonder with more weather coming in, how many innings the Cardinals can get in today. And then you start to think about just how long you can go with a young, very precious arm that the Cardinals have out there in Michael Walkup. You're concerned about a 46 minute rain delay, but the first thing is you ask Michael Walker is, you know, are you okay? You want to go back out there? And he's a competitor, so he'll say yes, but you'll keep a little closer eye. And, you know, the, if you had a lengthy rain delay, say in the next couple innings, you know, then you maybe say, okay, you're not going back out. How beautiful does this field look? Opening day, the plush green grass. And I was just thinking about all of our yards look good with all this rain we've gotten recently. Little check swing by Nate Sherholtz. And it's one ball, one strike. Bill Finley, who's been here for a number of seasons, and his crew, a lot of hours they put in. If you put your Scott's fertilizer down when you were supposed to, then your lawn at home would be popping out green right now. Scott's. And the catch is made. Gardening tips from the Mad Hungarian. You never know what you're going to hear on these telecasts, Al. And more specifically, what comes out of your mouth. And you'd be the first one to know, wouldn't oh, you? Oh, I'm telling you. I've heard some things. You've taught me some things over the years, Al. You told me your mother was a little concerned about a comment I made last well, night. Well, yeah, you were talking about... Uh, <laughs> Was it my ego? No, it's just your big head. <laughs> you can determine whether it's the size of your cranium or, or it's your big ego. Well, the ego is huge. <laughs> and then the size of the forehead over at Ballpark Village is scary. It is apparently frightened young children. Here's Starlin Castro. But your mother was a little concerned that I. Yeah, I, I called her yesterday. <laughs> Just to check in on her. Lovely Jane lives in South City and never misses a game. And we exchanged pleasantries. And then at the very end, she said, you know, was Al, you know, are you guys okay? Was Al serious? <laughs> I said, Mom, it's okay. <laughs> now, I am 40 now, Al, and yet my mother still checks in on me to make sure everything's all right. And her and mine, you're still little Danny. Oh, absolutely. Uh, four years old. Mm -hmm. Just dropped at zero. That's right. The 2-2. Two -two. Castro spoils it. This is my uh, 17th year of doing Cardinals baseball, and I believe this is number 30 for you. I believe so. I can't years. count that high. Congratulations. We have had a lot of fun. Ripped into center field, but Borges is there to make the catch. Oh. Nearly dropped it. He's shaking his head right now. He had the drop on the opener in Cincinnati. And two hands and got it. I remember the one error he did make was a ball that hit him in the heel of the glove and it'll pop out. That one looked like it was very similar, but. At least he was in a position where he could catch it after it popped out. We haven't seen quite the center fielder defensively as he's advertised, but I'm sure we will. There's Junior Lake, and he pulls it foul. Junior, Junior Lake. Remember, he had really quite the tear in 64 games. Last year, he, or 67 games, he had 64 RBI, or excuse me, hits in the second half. And he did something that put him in legendary category. He had two four-hit four games in those first 16 games. 
Nobody had done that in the National League since Bohart. That's legendary status right there. That's up the middle and a base hit. We're at Bush Stadium in St. Louis on Fox Sports Midwest, along with the Mad Hungarian, Al Roboski, Dan McLaughlin, Jim Hayes, and Ballpark Village. Mike Alt popped out to second. Hit some hard hit balls against Walker and Alt shaking his hand. And did the umpire rule he was hit by a pitch? Now he does, but I'm not sure Alt didn't talk him into it. Mike Matheny is yet to go out and argue. You see Yadier Molina questioning. Now this becomes a situation. Maybe we can get a camera on Mike Matheny and watch how he talks to the umpire. At some point, he's going to have to turn around and look inside his own dugout. This is where we don't have arguments really anymore. You just look back into the dugout and say, "Okay, let's have a nice conversation." We'll Our guys are checking on it. Let's see what the uh, and let's see what kind of uh, replay we have. I mean, I first thought it hit the handle, you know, the that's right off I the thought. end, and I think that's what the umpire thought. But then, reading the body language of the hitter, that way it looked like it did hit him on the hand. And sometimes those hitters try to sell it. Sure. And in this case, uh, Mike turned and looked at the dugout, and they said, "It's not worth the challenge." Well, after watching two weeks now of replay. I'm starting to wonder why we even have uh, uh, the managers go out and talk about these. Why not just set somebody up near the red hat who's down there for the commercial times and also they're in sync with the folks in New York, the umpires, and just let them make that call. Let the umpire look over and that individual will give you the call. Base hit out to left. And this game is tied. So Alt was hit by the pitch, and Castillo drives in junior length to tie it up at three. Hero of Friday night comes through again for the the Cubs. Castillo, catcher, hitting this ball and just underneath the effort of Peralta. At the very least, he would have saved that run if he would have got that to that ball, knocked it down. May not have had a play at first, but he would have not allowed the leading run runner, Junior Lake, to score. Would have been bases loaded. Now the go-ahead run is at second base for Edwin Jackson. Well, take him lightly. You know, he can swing the bat a little bit. Remember, he originally was signed in the sixth round by the Dodgers as an outfielder. One ball, one strike. The Ford Plaza. Kid takes a healthy rip. Good changeup, and it's one and two. Two quick outs in this fourth inning after the rain delay. Two base hits sandwiched around a, a hit batter. And a strikeout of Jackson as Molina holds on. The Cubs strand two, but they pick up a run. And they've tied it up. 3-3 three, three here at Bush.
We got Joe Kelly to take that pennant, have a little fun with it. You see it there. Surprising that Joe would do it too. There's the pennant. You'll take it home. Brought to you by the Pasta House at Coca-Cola. That's Friday, April 25th. And get your tickets to that game at cardinals.com slash promotions. All right, Pasta House has sponsored that pennant yes. night or day for as long as I can remember. Ever used a coupon on it? Of course I have. I'm not smart enough. Pay oh. full price. I don't believe it, Al. Tucci and Presta make me. They have hung tough through the late, uh, rain delay. Peter Borges struck out on three pitches, first time up. Michael Walker, he's on deck. And then the top of the lineup, and Matt Carpenter. Borges hits it down the left field line, and it's out of play. Milwaukee wins again. Kyle Loesch defeats Charlie Morton. 4 1 Milwaukee over Pittsburgh. And the Brewers are the first team to get to 10 wins. They're now 10 and 2, will be in Milwaukee tomorrow night. Borges, that's fair. Down into the corner, and he's off to the races. This will be a triple easily for Peter Borges. Slice a ball like that, hits this wet grass and gets around the corner down there. It's an automatic, but he's running on a little soft track too, but it, he gets over to third with ease. Isn't that something to see that speed from a Cardinal player? Really does change the complexion. He and Colton Wong with their ability to run. Quick visit by Okendo to Waka. Infield is drawn in. Our score is 3-3. Home half of the fourth here at Bush. A swing and a miss by Michael Walkup. By the way, Al, the Brewers are the 11th team since 2005 to start 9-2 in their first 11. Now 10-2. Five of the previous 10 have reached the postseason. Strike two on Michael Walker. I was on the 82 Cardinals that we started out 13 and 0. And with that start was able to still reach the postseason with a late season collapse because of the early start or good start. Walker swing and a miss strikes out. Three today for Edwin Jackson and it brings in Matt Carpenter. Matchups beginning tomorrow on Fox Sports Midwest. Lance Lynn and Matt Garza in game one. Tuesday, Shelby Miller and Marco Estrada. Joe Kelly, Willie Peralta. Getaway day on Wednesday. Then it's four with Washington, four with the Mets. Ryan Zimmerman will miss that series, a broken thumb. Not often do you, are you disappointed to miss the team's ace? But with Gallardo, the way the Cardinals own him, you are disappointed. You don't match up with Gallardo or today's winner, Kyle Loesch, the former Cardinal. Great opportunity for Carpenter to drive in his third run of the game. Singled up the middle with two outs and picked up two RBIs back in the second. 0 oh and 2. Runners in scoring position this season. Three for eight, four RBIs. Remember, you got a fly ball pitcher on the mound and gets the ball in the air. You're going to guarantee you're going to get a, a run home. Infield is drawn in. Does Jackson have that put away pitch here? Key spot in this game. 
ninety five with that fastball. Tried to overthrow it got the velocity but lost the control or command of it. Trying to go up the ladder get him to chase but that ball was so high it doesn't. Uh, it's an ineffective pitch. I mentioned earlier Danny. Jackson's can get to two strikes but can he put hitters away. One two pitch. Spoiled by Carpenter. Another fastball at 95. A lot of times that's really Al as you know what separates guys that are hovering around 500 which Jackson has done in his career or those that are exceptional and he's got good stuff. Good stuff but throws a lot of pitches the more pitches a hitter sees the better they get zoned in to the velocity. The one two in the dirt blocked by Castillo or just back to the bag at third inning started with his triple down the right field line. That's where Carpenter is so tough because he gets two strikes and becomes a much better hitter. More expand the zone often. More pitches you see the more likelihood you're going to get a mistake. Two two. Carpenter gets the fly ball. Junior Lake noted to have a very good arm. Let's see it here. It is not in time. Borges with his speed flying down the line, and it's four to three, St. Louis. He hit the ball about 300 feet. He usually get an RBI, and Lake does have that strong arm. That's three RBIs today for Matt Carpenter. On, on deck hitter has a responsibility to help out the runner, determine which way to slide. Now you see Colton Wong down there. He's trying to tell him go to the infield side. The throw is to the foul territory, so go inside. And good communication between Borges and Wong, and the Cardinals get the go-ahead run. Colton Wong with two outs trying to bunt his way on. Nothing at two. You can see the throws in foul territory, so you can see that he slides for the infield side. Comes right across that plate without a tag. Anybody else, that play is a lot closer. Yes. Wong may have been safe. Maybe Joe Kelly, but probably everybody else. There's going to be a definite play at the plate. Cardinals back on top. Carpenter is driven in three. The other RBI to the man at the plate, Colt Wong. That happened with two outs in the second with a base hit into right to score Carpenter. Now runs full here on Colton Wong. Ground ball slowly hit to Rizzo to Jackson. The Cardinals get a leadoff triple by Borges into the right field corner. He scores on the sack fly and RBI from Carpenter.
4-3 St. Louis leading Chicago. You're in the top of the fifth. Bonifacio, Ruggiano, and Rizzo. One, two, three in the Cubs lineup. Trying to bunt his way on. Carpenter. One pitch, one out. Thank you. A look at the scoring summary in the first inning. Anthony Rizzo, the first pitch that he saw. Two run shot, two nothing Cubs. Cardinals, though, in the second with two outs. Carpenter up the middle. That would score two to tie it up. After that, it was Colton Long. Carpenter had stolen a base. That would sneak through on the right side. That makes it three to two. And then moments ago, the sack fly and RBI from Carpenter to make it four to three. And here's Justin Ruggiano. Ruggiano singled on a 3 1 pitch back in the first, scored on the Rizzo home run. He walked in the third, then was picked off by Walkup. Quite the contrast with how much time it takes Michael Walker between pitches and Edwin Jackson. It has to send a message to the hitters that you know hey I'm not afraid of you. Get the ball and throw it. And there's another strikeout six today for Michael Walker. Fox tracks brought to you by Plaza Tire. It was what we talked about that change up that looks like a little bit like a screwball as it runs in and down and in to a right handed batter. Anthony Rizzo began his pro career with Boston. Then with San Diego traded for. Kashner the hard throwing right hander who by the way threw a one hitter the other night he's yeah. in the rotation for San Diego. Triple digits pitcher for an everyday player. One one is hit to first and Adams will take it himself. We're midway through five. It's holiday. Adams Molina do up. A 4 3 lead for St. Louis over Chicago. There's a look at Michael Walker. Well, his dad is here, and so is Jim Hayes. Jimmy. Yeah, this is uh, Tom Walker wa watching his son. Now, you've seen your son pitch in very high pressure situations in the postseason. Does it get any easier watching your son pitch in the major leagues? No, no, it never gets easy. Uh, I think just like every other dad that's out there got their kid uh, throwing today. MLB college whatever it's always a uh, it's always a little gut wrenching. The one thing that strikes most people outside the talent of Michael but the maturity a young guy who doesn't seem to get overwhelmed by 
the big moments. Mike Matheny says you really don't have to say much. Is that just good, solid parenting? Well, uh, I'd like to take credit, but that's a lot of him, too. So we've always kind of stressed, you know, just for him to keep. Uh, yeah, that ball will drop for Matt Holiday. Last thing before we let you go. We had a shot on the pregame show yesterday of the grandparents, Gary and Mary Lynn. They were seated in section 450. We asked Michael about it live on the pregame show. And uh, he said they came on their own because we thought maybe he could get them better tickets. Is that true? Yeah, they, uh, you know, sometimes they'll just kind of show up. And uh, that's what happened in that situation. I could tell I watched your interview that night. He was surprised when he heard that they were even there. So, uh, yeah, he, they're, they're nice. Uh, you know, they don't think they they think they'd be bothersome by, you know, hitting him up for tickets and all. But uh, he certainly would get them sitting in good spots. Great family, a lot to be proud of your son. Thanks for the time. Thanks, man. All right, Danny. All right, good stuff, Jim. Thank you to uh, Mr. Walker. They have another son, Lucas, who's a starting linebacker at Wyoming, and a daughter that's uh, playing high school volleyball and a very good player. Adams grounds into a double play, maybe. And it is, 4-6-3. You can see where Bonifacio couldn't get it out of the glove. Eventually he did in a 4-6-3 double play. The Cubs have turned two today. Free coffee event at McDonald's. Participating McDonald's restaurants in St. Louis are offering a free small McCafe coffee during breakfast hours now through April 13th. No purchase necessary. Al, I watch my kids and my son uh, was pitching the other day. He is all of eight. Are and you, it's gut-wrenching. Are you kidding me? I, I've never heard you talk about your kids. Well, I don't want to brag. Really? Well. I can't imagine, though, watching your <laughs> son or daughter. Exactly. It's such a high-level compete. 4-6-3 with the double play. And one of the plays that is not reviewable... You saw it a lot in spring training. The neighborhood play, meaning that you're maybe not on the bag, but around the bag. Drags his foot across there. In my mind, that's that's fine. That would be withheld or upheld. Um, but now they're keeping a little closer eye on that. And one of the real problems is remember used to what would constitute a catch in the outfield. You know, it used to be if you would catch the ball reach into your glove and in the act of extracting the ball it fell it was always a catch now they're saying you have to reach in and have control of the ball when and if you don't have control of it and you drop it then it's a no catch that's a little different than in the past in the neighborhood play the idea is that 99 out of 100 times professional athletes at this level will make that play and it's also an idea that you can avoid injury so it's a part of player safety as well I believe it was the Cubs when they were playing in Pittsburgh in the first series of the year that they were involved in a, a double play at second base and it was reviewed because yeah, it was Neil Walker made a bad throw to the shortstop covering, and you know then they claimed that they could review that part because it wasn't the neighborhood. They said the throw pulled the, the shortstop off the bag, and so there are little situations that uh, you really got to keep your eye on some some of these uh, plays because there may be something that you're not. Originally, you're thinking it's going to be a neighborhood play, but if it's a bad throw, you can have it reviewed. Now they're trying to get By the way, count. This is reviewable. Counts. So if an umpire would lose the count and it's something they could go back and look at pitch by pitch of the at bat to make sure that they have it right. Well, you know what they'll do, and Mike's going to get a clarification right now. Now what he'll do is he'll go into the Cardinal dugout and they'll actually call the official score and get the account from the official score. And again, if they wanted to review it too, they could do that. They could go back and roll back 
this at bat to see uh, the count and get it right. 3 2. So three balls and two strikes. I believe it was Yadier Molina that brought it up to the umpire and said, wait a minute, it's not 2 2, it's 3 2. And it doesn't matter. Strikeout of Yachty. Molina is one for three today. We're through five. The Redbirds on top. from last year's postseason run. Then we'll have the Cardinals and the Brewers. And you'll see the game on Fox Sports Midwest. Nate Shearholtz, Starlin Castro, and Junior Lake. Shearholtz is 0 for 2. He has struck out swinging and also popped out to third Mark Ellis rehab assignment began today one for three with a single and a strikeout with Triple A Memphis against the Cubs Triple A affiliate Iowa. There's that good changeup. Michael Walker had the fourth highest swing and miss percentage against that changeup in all of baseball last season at 41%. That one was 84 miles an hour. That's a lot better. Slower speed setting up the differential between his fastball and the and the changeup. And Walker went to that changeup 28% of his pitches last year, which was the second most behind Chris Capuano the lefty or remember when he first came up he only had two pitches curveball was non-existent bottom dropped out of that pitch and a strikeout number seven for Michael Walker Changed up 87 here but what also makes it so effective is from the angle that he releases the ball one it's the same release point as his fastball and it just does so much more movement and then that downward action but it looks just like the fastball and it's Starlin Castro round ball that's hit to short Peralta up with it two down and he's getting more and more mileage out of that curveball so I think you're going to see that the change up you know, will come down in in uh, percentage. Also, the the uh, fastball will probably 
be a little lower percentage also at the pitch thrown in the game. Junior Lake reached on an air by the third baseman Matt Carpenter and then singled and scored back in the fourth. Line drive into center. Borges is there. Quick inning for Michael Walkout. And Pops is all smiles. Also a little nervous. April 26, 25,000 fans take home that jersey that Yachty is showing you right there. His jersey giveaway has the NL Champions logo on the sleeve. And you can take home that Yachty or Molina jersey. Presented by Lumiere Casino and Hotels. And that is April 26, the Cards and the Pirates. Any uh, ideas on that there, Al? H. Wow. Wow. Much older than he looks, but H. Wow. Funny, but wow. <laughs> Here is Craig. Ground ball to the right side. Allen just flips his bat. One pitch, one out. That was the safest choice I could have thought of. <laughs> well, Michael Walker has settled in after the rain delay. Last seven outs, a total of 13 pitches. And he's had back to back six pitch innings. Pitch count for Edwin Jackson is at 98. Could be his final inning. He is due up third. Yeah, and Blake Parker. Act yeah, activity is happening now in that bullpen for Chicago. And the same in the Cardinal bullpen. Like Martinez is warming up. Johnny Peralta at the plate. Part of Carlos warming up is the fact that where the Cardinals are in the order, the seventh man, if they get a scoring opportunity. In a game like this, after Walk is set out with a you know, rain delay, you'd pinch it for him. And there's a look at Parker, who was just called up. Blake Parker out of the University of Arkansas. Makes his home in Fayetteville.
Walker is at just over 80 pitches. Outfield is deep straight away. The 2 2. Peralta on a 3 2 pitch back of the second single to left. And scored. The two out hit by Carpenter. And also bounced into a 6 4 3 double play. Off speed pitch is hit high in the air out to left. Junior Lake, two down. So it looks like both the starters beginning to settle in right when their days may come to a close. Peter Borges with a triple back in the fourth, down into the right field corner. And scored the Cardinals fourth run on the sack fly RBI by Carpenter who has driven in three. Love to see the Cardinals add on this inning. And then there's a part of me that wants to see Michael Walker out there for one more inning to work. Me too. One ball, one strike. You would have to think at some point you will see Carlos Martinez if he's up and throwing. If it's not next inning, after would, that. Yeah, I would. I would like to see him good get through the seventh, and then I think this day would be through, and and you would say, hey, left the left the game in good shape for the bullpen. You'd have Carlos. You have what we call the big three. Rosenthal, Martinez, and Segrist. Am I coming back from a rain delay, Al? How did your arm react and others when you had 40 minutes or 40 plus minutes? Was it that big of a deal? It, it wasn't that big a deal, and and in honesty, most of the time those rain delays affected the either the starter or middle relief. So I had to wait out more of them, you know, getting a chance to pitch. But it's a mental state of mind. Third walk issued by Jackson. And we are going to see Walker uh, go out and at least start the seventh day. Well, we have a moment. Around the NL Central, this is updated. Brewers, look at that. Nine straight Reds. A tough start at home. And Pittsburgh, tough start for Andrew McCutcheon. Been nursing a injury. But playing through it is Borges is back in safely. Lights are on here at Bush Stadium. Rain delay was 46 minutes. And strike one on Michael Walkup. Walker sacrificed very good bunt. Runners at first and second in the second inning had to deaden it with Anthony Rizzo bearing down on him from first base. Got the runners over, and with that, a base hit from Carpenter to drive in two, and that's Michael's dad. By the way, Jim Hayes told us that to do that interview. Mr. Walker agreed to do it, but not when Michael was pitching. I'm not sure he'd be able to do it right now when he's hitting. A little too keyed up when Mike's on Michael Walker's on the mound. Hey, 
And a strikeout of walk up. Garza, former Cub, traded to Texas, signed with Milwaukee in the offseason. He's 0 1, and we'll come your way tomorrow at 6 30. You know, Matt Garza winds up in Milwaukee, Al, because he was on vacation. And the story that we were told is that Garza was offered the same amount of money and length of contract from the Angels. And he was uh, on vacation, and he said, when I'm on vacation, I don't need to be bothered. So the angel said, well, that's fine, but here's the limit of the time period we're going to give you to sign this. And he said, well, I'm, I'm on vacation. So that was pulled, and now he's in Milwaukee. Well, you know, it's a lot of uh, pitchers would rather pitch in the National League than the American League with the D.H., one they feel like they're more of an athlete they're part of the game but uh, I think it's just that extra bat in a lot of those American League lineups I think it probably worked out best for Garza and I know his first start of the year he was pitched very very well Mike all one ball one strike we're in the seventh the fly ball lifted out to deep right field Craig is on the move he won't get it it's a fair ball and it's off the wall lead off double for the Cubbies now Craig played that ball very very well but where it was positioned it's an automatic double and Craig getting to that ball and playing the carom off the wall he holds him to the double a breaking ball out away from him and just slices it off the wall there it goes and plays that carom perfectly we weren't expecting that when you're got a one run lead the lead off double. Wellington Castillo Seeger is now throwing in the bullpen and they're going to stall here. Cubs on their bench today. One right hander right handed hitter Darwin Barney. Everybody else on the left side that Sweeney Baker Balbuena and Kalish. So the, the pinch hitters they would likely go to are all left handed. That's why Seeger is getting up and and ready in a hurry. You got to work on this guy right here. Wellington Castillo struck out back in the second. Laced a pitch. 
back in the fourth inning to left field for an RBI single. Previous starts, Walker has gone six and two thirds, both against Cincinnati. Six innings on opening day, and pitching into the seventh in this ball game. The opening day, meaning the home opener here in St. Louis, that pitches up three and one. Fourth sellout this season. Crowd of 44,135. 44135. 90 pitches on the afternoon for Walker, but as you said, a couple of these pitches have been up, and it's usually very easy for him to keep the ball down. Even there is a high strike. Curveballs, those cutters, curveballs, things that are getting up there. Old belief is the first thing that goes on a pitcher is his legs. When your legs get tired, your ball gets elevated. On the outside corner and a strikeout. Eight today for Michael Walker. Big, big strikeout there. No doubt about it. Up and away, and the call goes Walker's way. Of the eight, that's the first that's been looking. The other seven swinging. Ryan Sweeney pinch inning here. So Edwin Jackson right now is on the hook and after they make the announcement for Sweeney. Looks like that'll be all for Michael Walker. Who will get a huge ovation as he exits stage left. Eight gallons or more now until September 19th and receive up to 50% off on a pair of tickets to a Cardinals home game. For more information, visit cardinals.com slash Phillips 66. It's a lonely feeling, isn't it, Al? I mean, you've, you've pitched well, but it's out of your hands. And yeah, that's it. You know, you're so much in control of a game, and now all of a sudden you've got to wait and see what happens here. Seagrist has been called in. They're Cubs are going to counter and they're going to go with their only right hand to bat off the bench. That's Darwin Barney. We'll take this trade off anytime. Seeger is facing Barney. Barney, by the way, his career as a pinch hitter is two for 19. This year, one, 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter. One out runner at second. Pretty healthy hack right there. Michael Walker, 114 pitches, 71 were strikes. Keep an eye on him, but you know, obviously they're not babying him. Let him go in 114 pitches, 
and with the rain delay also you can understand the move agree with it but Dan I liked it you know letting you let uh, Waka at least go out there and and uh, Go out there and, and start the inning. He gets one out, but you otherwise you would have earned Martinez already. By the way, it was 92 pitches for Michael Walker. We were handed incorrect information. 114. We thought that'd be a little surprising. 114 for Edward Jackson. So 92 for Walker. Here's a one two. Carved them up. Good pitch right there. Segrist gets his man. Now they'll turn around. Bonifacio, he'll bat. The switch hitter bats right handed off, off of Segrist. Great start that Bonifacio's off to. So his numbers as a right handed batter are a little gaudy. He's 8 for 15. Usually, when you have a switch hitter, their natural side is going to be right handed. So, probably a little more pop in his bat right handed. And because he's got the great speed, they made him a switch hitter and he's more of a slap hitter left handed. Here's the 0 1. Bonifacio lied to shallow left center on a 3 2 pitch back in the first. Struck out in the third and grounded out in the fifth. The hit leader right now, hits leader is Emilio Bonifacio in the National League. The 1 1. Joe Williams is the uh, film critic from the St. Louis Post Dispatch, and he passes along this note. And I appreciate this. So, the gentleman with the jersey 6300. Not his age. That is not his age. Mr. Ebling is wearing number 6300 on his jersey. He is from local 6300 of the Communications Workers Union, to which many of the TV crews belong. So, thank you for passing that along. Good work by Segrist.
It's our AT&T fan photo. This comes in from uh, Melissa. See her Twitter handle there. Fred Bird, a part of the photo, and we thank you for participating. This is brought to you by AT&T. Here's James Russell. His dad pitched in the big leagues, used an awful lot. In the first couple of weeks, we have not seen him in this series. Talk that he eventually would even close maybe this year or be part of a committee. Jose Barris has been knocked out of that role. It's our Chevy call to the pen. And the Cardinals will send Carpenter, Wong, and Holiday, And then another lefty after that, Adams. So that's why we see James Russell. Cardinals head to head since 2001. Or rather, excuse me, since 2011. 13 games above 500 against Chicago. And it played well at this ballpark. We're in the home half of the seventh. Big day already for Matt Carpenter. Three RBIs. Single with two outs to score two back in the second. Sack fly to score Peter Borges in the fourth. Russell's been pretty reliable for the Cubs. He did surrender a three run home run to Pedro Alvarez on Thursday. And a ground ball that's hit to the right side. Rizzo will take it himself for the out. Busy his last three years with the Cubs, 64 appearances in 2011, 77 in 2012, 74 last year. Colton Wong is two for three with an RBI. Slapped a base hit to left, single to right to score Carpenter in the second, and bounced out to first. See how he stays in against that slider. So off for the first pitch here. Mark Ellis getting very close to returning to the Cardinals and you wonder in spots like these would we see Mark Ellis pinch hitting. I remember Mark Ellis is very good has good numbers against left handed pitching and one of the best defensive second basements all time. So I think if it works to Mike's advantage there'll be times when we'll see that late inning switch. Best thing Colton Wong can do is just keep on Battling up there, having tough at bats, get a few hits off these left-handers, and and then, you know, like I say, for certain situations, you would do it. Mark Ellis is going to be a big addition to that ball club. Just have another veteran on that bench. One two is in the air left field junior lake Theo Epstein era now in its third season results from the first two years 197 games the Cubs have lost and it's quite the statement when you say that's the worst two year period the Northsiders have ever had and it's actually the Lost more the last two years than they did two years previous to the regime, but I don't think it's undeniable their farm system is much better under the new leadership. Starting to stockpile some position players, still maybe a little weak in the pitching department, but they're starting to get some, starting to see their future. And probably still two years away. What do you think a realistic goal is for the Cubs? 500? Well, lost as many games as they have, yeah. 
think you got to get to 500 before you can start thinking, you know, you're capable of, of winning the division. The Cubs, though, do believe they have the right man for the job at the major league level with Rick Renteria. They gave him a, a three-year deal, and there are two option years after that. Strong uh, development man, you know. Two Matt Holiday has been on base four times. So two-out walk, and it brings in Adams. Rick Renteria, number of years with San Diego and Miami. Yeah, and and you know, as I said, he's been in the minor leagues, understands the how to develop young players. And I'd have to say, just in our first look, even though we've highlighted Castro was, you know, a little bit indifferent, but everybody else is with a slow pace from Edward Jackson. But in games one and two of this series, I think we've seen a much more involved Star uh, Starling Castro that, you know, he's. Looks like he wants to play. Looks like he's going to have a a better approach to playing this game under Rick Renteria. The 0-1 hit the other way, and it is foul. Ooh. No argument from Jose Okendo. That third base umpire is Mike Estabrook. He's backpedaling on this ball, and it's where it goes over the bag. It lands in foul territory, Ooh. but did it go over the bag fair? I don't know. We, we'd have a definitive pitcher, so he's got the best angle on it, even though he's backpedaling. Well, two outs. Holiday is the runner at first. Adams is flied out to deep left center. Hit a one hopper on a shift to the third baseman, Alt. And then also bounced into a 4 6 3 double play. Runner goes. That's Holiday on his way to second, and they got him. Holiday is caught stealing. That ends the seventh. It's up to the bullpen when we come back. Segrist got the final couple of outs in the top half of this seventh inning. Cardinals trying to hold on. They lead it by a run.
Bomberito Sports Update, Ballpark Village in Pat Paris. Pat. The Cardinals starting tomorrow night against Milwaukee. Lynn and Garza. Miller and Estrada in game two. Kelly and Peralta in game three. Well, Michael Walker, he struck out eight here today. It'll be Ruggiano, Rizzo, and Sheerholtz. And I think something that we notice is that his velocity was down a bit today. Which then didn't offset the changeup as much as we normally see. And the fastball a few times was in the mid 90s, but for the most part, he was around 92, 93. Which is fine, but uh, I, I think we're still waiting for him to get really going. But the key is he's able to win with less stuff. Derek Lillequist, I think, has done an outstanding job. A lot of people predicted doom once Dave Duncan left, but we really haven't missed a beat with with Lily. Here's a 1 1. Ruggiano puts it in the air. Deep right center, Borges back with just enough room. <laughs> See Borges just tippy toeing. So he gets used to this new ballpark. Segrist has retired all three men he's faced. Martinez is thrown in the Cardinal bullpen behind him. As he's got the two left handers coming up now. Here is Rizzo. And a slider is in there for a strike. And that was the pitch that was left up to Rizzo. Ball game on Friday to tie the game up. The shift is on here for Rizzo. Well, they really have got uh, Alan Craig off the line in right field. Got a bunch of them in the outfield, but and the fastball is something that you know you think about with Segrist. And again, we pointed out there he is. There's your right fielder. One ball and two strikes. And there's the fastball again. Going back to the original point we were trying to make the beginning of the at bat was that Segrist was going with the slider that he got burnt on the other night. And this time he sticks with a fastball. And you wonder if that should have been the pitch the other night. Well, I'm not going to second guess pitch. Because he threw him, it was either six or seven straight fastballs, and then he hung the breaking ball. Now, if he would have thrown the breaking ball like he just did, he would have struck him out the other night also. So it was just he didn't throw the good one. To get that ball like that down and away, you're not going to hit a home run on it. But you know, he threw six or seven straight fastballs, and it was the fact that it, it just was not a good off speed pitch. It hung. Over the middle of the plate, and that's why it was hit out. Nate Sheerholtz takes the fastball low and away. Two balls and no strikes. He has struck out twice and also popped out. But you kind of Alan Craig again with a left handed hitter playing well off the right field line. I think they think that one, he throws too hard. Two, he's not going to make a mistake like he did the other day. He's going to have that good bury that good breaking ball down and away. They're not going to be able to pull the ball into the right field corner. It's all predicated on making good execution. Three and one. That could have been a strike right there. Just off the plate, but a real good. Pitch if you're hitting the count, but now he's run the count 3 1. Popped up. And Carpenter is there. 
Segrist gets five outs coming out of the pen, and he strikes out two. Presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Line drive home run yesterday for Adams. He'll lead it off in the home half of the eighth, and he is 0 for 3 today. Parker, Blake Parker is the new pitcher. Luis Valbuena takes over at second. Emilio Bonifacio, his versatility moves from second to center field, and Reggiano is in right. So Parker's spot is Shearhold's spot in the lineup for Chicago. So Adams has flied out and our Chevy call to the pen to deep left center hit a one hopper to third and grounded into a double play two balls and no strikes Adams in the air to right gets underneath it and the catch is made by Ruggiano let's take a look at our Mazda game summary Michael Walker a chance to win good work out of the bullpen by Segrist Edwin Jackson is on the hook right now six innings eight hits Rizzo the two run homer the first and the Cardinals tied it up in the second then took the lead and they lead now four to three. There's Rosenthal gave up the three run homer to Wellington Castillo on Friday night. He's getting loose. A little late with that swing is Yadier Molina. So Russell a scoreless inning. In the seventh for Chicago. And now Parker here in the eighth. And I mentioned that Blake Parker spacing Yachty right here was recalled today. Made his major league debut with the Cubs back in 2012. 
Started at Iowa where he's been the. The all time franchise leader in saves there. And 42 saves to hold that. Relief. Save record at uh, Iowa. Originally drafted by Chicago in the 16th round of the 2002 draft. Outfield is deep and a 2 1 pitch served into right for a base hit. It's another two hit day for Yadier Molina against Chicago. And it's a day that we celebrate Yadier Molina and his six consecutive gold gloves. Mike Matheny had three here in St. Louis, four total, and then Tom Bagnazzi. Always knew he had the ability to go to the opposite field. But so much more dangerous when he goes out there, expands the whole zone, and really a good piece of hitting. Pitch out away from him, didn't try to pull off it, just went with it. Saw Pagnazzi there and mentioned Blake Parker from Fayetteville and the University of Arkansas. Sure Pags knows Blake very well. Pags was on the uh, coaching staff of the Razorbacks for a while and now helping out some of the youth teams in the area. Got a very good Pagnazzi uh, foundation there. Does a lot of good things for the youth of I guess Northwest Arkansas and Fayetteville in particular. The Sun has made its appearance for the first time in quite a while here at the ballpark. A little bit low, two balls and no strikes. This is going to be the time that Alan Craig gets something going. Long look and a 2 0. Runner was going, the hit and run was on. What do you think about doing that with Alan Craig? You take the thinking out of it, which may be going through his mind and the struggles that he has had. Craig has walked and scored. He struck out and grounded out. One of the things a manager can do is try to jump start a guy, as you said, take the, the thought process out of it. Just put that hit and run on and get him to react to it. But Thought it might be on just the way he was indecisive looking at that last pitch. The 2 1. Lined in the right. That's a base hit. That's the Alan Craig, you know. Next time you're looking to pick up great seats to the game, head to StubHub, where you can earn 2% back in fan rewards on every purchase. Step up your ticket to upgrades and more. Here's Johnny Peralta. Happy fourth birthday to a big Cardinal fan Tanner Hicker. Who's watching on Fox Sports Midwest. Happy birthday to Tanner. So back to back singles to right. Here's Peralta. Singled and scored. Back in the second bounced into a 6 4 3 double play. And also fly it out to left. In time is called as Castillo may want to change the signs with a runner at second base and also go over the quick scouting report here on Johnny Peralta. Now what was it you said with a man on second what was the sign. Better call time get it under. Get everybody on the same page. And it sure wouldn't hurt Peralta or the Cardinals to pad the lead. Cardinals head to Milwaukee after the game today. The Cubs head to New York. 
And they'll take on the Yankees Tuesday night. Derek Jeter, by the way, nursing a, a quad issue. Talk of potentially putting him on the disabled list. I think I heard Joe Girardi made a comment that I, I wasn't hired to uh, do a farewell tour for Jeter. It's kind of the balancing act. You've got to treat it, it all with respect, but you also, your also job is to win as many games as you can. 2-0. That make a lot of sense, does it? When you look at the the schedule for the Cubs, they have an off day tomorrow, play two games against the Yankees, and have another off day. And then we're in the midst of playing 20 straight. Two and one. I'm not sure. The Cardinals would want to be playing, as you said, in the midst of 21 straight, 20 straight, whatever it is. However, for all the rain delays and off days when they came, this would be the time if you're going to do it. Be a little tougher in August. Well, I mean, you know, and you, you know just, what I mean. These guys are, are you know, creatures of habit, as we yeah, talk about. You, you don't need two in a week, right? And you know, really, two in four days. And somewhere down the line, that's going to, you know, they're going to get into a situation where they're going to play 20 out of 20. And, you know, then you wish you had one of those off days during that stretch. 2 1 pitch. 3 and 1. Also, a happy birthday to Gene Steinman, who's watching in Webster Groves today. Happy birthday to Gene. Chance for Peralta here to do some damage with a count of three bowls in one strike. And he does some damage here. Down it to the corner. Molina scores. Craig on his way to third. He'll stop there. It's a two hit day for Johnny Peralta. Two more RBIs. His RBI total is up to six. But two hits really makes it a lot more pleasant. Hitting the count in his favor. Look at he gets the ball down and in. He just hammered that ball. He saw the top spin. As that ball got down in the corner, and Junior Lake really did a good job to get it back in quickly, and only allowed to score one. Now it's Borges with the infield drawn in. Runners at second and third. Lots of possibilities here for the Cardinals. Think about Borges. You could do the squeeze, the safety squeeze, and hitting lanes everywhere with the infield drawn in. John Jay is on deck. Castillo, the catcher, after Okendo flashed a bunch of signs to Borges, he went out to talk to his pitcher, so they'll remind. Parker and middle infielders are all the different options that you just talked about. Kendo then came down and talked to Borges. Bonifacio is on one knee out center. Now he just gets up. Here's the 0 1. 0 2. Wesley Wright begins to throw in the cup bullpen, a left hander. Got Rosenthal along with Nishek. The 0 2 is hit to the left side, bobbled at third, and nearly thrown away. Run scores, that's Craig. The Cardinals add to their lead. 
It's now six to three. Infield in and like all playing at, at third base you see him even with the bag comes in on this ball but it gets away from him and then the off balance throw and it's not a force play there so he's got a tag and when you throw make an off balance throw like that it's almost impossible you're going to make a good throw or at least one would be good and be able for the catcher to tag out a runner. Peralta advancing to third Borges at first. Still only one out. And here is John Jay. It was Jay and Descalso in game two of the series coming off the bench. That provided a punch in that offensive attack for St. Louis. It's Chris Bazio, former major leaguer, threw a no-hitter. He'll visit with his right-hander, Blake Parker. Usually when the pitching coach comes out here, you're not going to make a pitching change. Still could. John Jay has been announced as the pinch hitter. So John Jay coming off the bench since 2013. This is why we say he's been somewhat of a forgotten man. You have Andrew McCutcheon, Carlos Gomez, and then third is John Jay. Most RBIs since 2013 by center fielders. He had a career high in RBIs a year ago. I remember prior to the last season, he was getting those RBIs out of the leadoff spot. But last year he had. A career best 67 majority of those at the bottom of the order. Runners at the corners with one out. And the Cardinals tack on here you'll see Pat Neshek pitch the ninth. Save situation Rosenthal if they get one more run or more then it's Neshek. More pitcher worries about that runner at first. It's probably going to affect his con control going to the plate. Usually affects it in a negative way. Good cut by Jay. Season that John Jay not only coming off a career high in RBIs, but also doubles and hits. About a 294 lifetime hitter. Yeah, last four seasons, 293. Got a good memory there, Hungo. Here's the 01. Now it's 0 and 2. The rare Bob Euchre jersey, the ballpark. Part of the uh, 64 championship team that we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of that team. And you'll get to see Mr. Euchre tomorrow night. He Always is the fun. voice of the uh, the Brewers. And he does not do the game a Perry Doyle style. Very first, straight laced. First time I listened to him, I was disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he is hysterical. Oh. I grew up with him on Johnny Carson show. Mr. Right. Baseball, and if anybody's old enough to see any of those uh, clips, he was hysterical. He appeared on Johnny Carson more than anybody. Yeah, and Johnny Carson loved it. That was half the fun of it, just watching him laugh. You know, Euchre, when he did his Hall of Fame speech, no prepared notes, just went up there and winged it for 20 minutes and nailed it.
One two to John Jay. Little flare. That's caught by Castro. Reminder that baseball today on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are winning. Grab some buds. And by four, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Pitching change for Chicago. We'll tell you about it when we come back. Fifty cents all day tomorrow, and on the run. Wesley Wright, our Chevy, called to the pen. So Wesley, for a number of years with Houston, at one point he was a Rule Five pickup, and now working out of the pen, one of two lefties for the Chicago Cubs. Brown should be clappy for Matt Carpenter, but there's three little kids that were. Putting on a pretty good little dance routine, entertaining the crowd during the pitching break. Runners at the corners for Matt Carpenter. Matt Carpenter with three RBIs today, one for three. Runners at first and third. A check on Peter Borges. As he picked up an RBI. Moments ago. Very nice little championship flag that was erected opening day. 19th National League champions. 2019th in the history of the Cardinals. Play on uh, Borges was a error on Mike Alt, but he did get the RBI. So two outs, and here's a 1 0 pitch from Wesley Wright. 1 and 1.
That's ripped, but Rizzo is there. Could not hit that ball any harder. Cardinals pick up two. It's 6-3. Six to three, St. Louis. Well pitched game for the Cardinals and Waka Segrist. We know what he's done behind the play, but also what he's done against Chicago over the years. And in recent games, he's made some history. Most consecutive games against an opponent with two or more hits and a run scored, including today. It's eight in a row against Chicago for Yadier Molina. Pujols against Cincinnati, Lou Brock against Pittsburgh, and Frankie Frisch. 1931 against the Phillies. Here's Starlin Castro. Castro is lined out, grounded out, struck out. Rosenthal is our Chevy call to the pen. One ball and one strike. Gave up the three run home run on Friday night. Still looking to be perfect in the save situation. Three for three this year. Seems like he's been entrenched in this spot, but three saves he has now that matches his regular season total from last year. Yeah, he did an outstanding job. He was the setup man, then when towards the end, Mojica started. Just kind of wore himself down, went to Rosenthal, and then he was electric in the postseason. Four saves in the postseason run. Last two years, he still has yet to give up a run in postseason. Over 100 strikeouts. He had 108 last year in the regular season. That was third best among relievers. And he strikes out Starlin Castro. It's the 11th. Strikeout by the Cardinals pitching staff today. Get hitters to go after that fastball up there. They have no chance. The very best they can do is pop it up. Junior Lake. Look that glove popping up here. It's a six pitch first inning for Trevor Rosenthal on Friday night. Winning run at second base. The Cardinals elected to have Rosenthal hit for himself. And a move that backfired. And the Cardinals lost game one. Wellington Castillo would hit a three run homer. 
yesterday it was a very good pitching by Adam Wainwright and today the Cardinals with Walker Segrist and Rosenthal the young guns of St. Louis and this is well hit into right center field Borges on the move can't get to it Junior Lake on his way to third one out triple Good part of the bat and just a little bit short with the reach of Borges. Junior Lake is it's kind of an intriguing player. He's had some success at the big league level. Got the good throwing arm. Looks like he can run and he's got some pop in his bat. Micah Alt with one out. He has doubled. Was hit by a pitch and then popped out to Colton Wong. Two and zero. Oh. There's a rope into center field. Makes it six to four, and the tuck run comes to the plate. The ball was smoked. Uh, I, I've noticed it's at least the third time in a row that Rosenthal's velocity is down. Sure, it's 95, 96, but they're teeing off on it. Not like it was 98 and above. And just a little bit of difference in that velocity. He does have secondary pitches he can go to. A very good changeup, breaking ball there. And look who it is at the plate Wellington Castillo. Three run homer, won it for the Cubs against Rosenthal on Friday night. Pitch at 96, nothing in two. Rosenthal would love a double play. Starting him off with a curveball, and then now the fastball. Punching him. Not real deep in the outfield either, are they? And did he hit him? I believe he did. He did. Castillo hit by the pitch. He's not hitting him to put on to bring the potential go ahead run on the on the mount or at the plate. John Baker is running one catcher for the other. A little tick, it seemed like before it hit the glove. Yep. And it has gotten awfully interesting now as Luis Valbuena will be the hitter for Chicago. I don't know if you heard Dan, but John Baker is running for Castillo. Cubs are down to one position player on their bench. That's Kalish. Runners at first and second. Now time is called. Now Buena is one for two off of Rosenthal with two walks and one strikeout. And a change up in there at 85 miles an hour. Throw that change up 85 and then your fastball 95 and above. You got your 10 or 11 miles an hour differential that is optimum. 
0 and 2. He had Castillo at 0 and 2. And one of the things is we saw these flamethrowers coming out of the Cardinal bullpen a year ago. They all did such an exceptional job. But if you look and you look around the league, everybody's coming up with flamethrowers coming out of the bullpen, so it's not a novelty anymore. The 0 2. Martinez in the Cardinal pin, Virus in the Cubs pin. Two balls and two strikes. Watch out. Said he's all right. Better man than me. In the air, center field. Gorgeous. Under it to make the catch round number two. Will be 20 plus pitches for Rosenthal. Our Budweiser player of the game is Michael Walkup. As Trevor is trying to finish it off. Emilio Bonifacio. Hits leader starting the day. You got to be careful with him. Bonifacio hitless today, 0 for 4. And you talk about the pitch total game up there, and it's 22 now. I think Rosenthal's big and strong. I don't think that really affects him that much. And we're talking about tomorrow. Down to the last strike. Be smart with an 0-2 count. Rossio's had one at bat against Rosenthal and he struck out. The Cubs down to their final strike. The 0 2. Bonifacio stays alive. 97. 97 on that fastball. That's the That's the highest he's thrown on this homestand. And it's not uncommon for a lot of hard throwers to be down in velocity a little bit in April. Will this be the pitch that ends it? It's a ground ball to the right side. Handled by Roth and the Cardinals hold on six to four. They take two of three against Chicago. 
talked about it. The key was to win this game, this series, have a good series, and get off to a good start on a tough road trip coming up, starting tomorrow night in Milwaukee. Missouri Lottery, Cardinals Live. The postgame show is next. St. Louis holds on. They beat the Cubbies 6-4.